Time now for another edition of Hey Bobby with Senior VP of the Cleveland Guardians, my good friend Bobby DiBiasio with us. Hey Bobby brought to you each and every week on WAKR by J.W. Dodato Electric. Bobby, you were there in the 90s when Kenny Lofton was the catalyst for our baseball team. And I know we had the boppers and the hitters and everything, but it seemed like Lofton made us go. And I wanted to bring that up this week because Stephen Kwan, to me, and I know it's a small sample right now, he has been a terrific leadoff hitter since Tito moved him into that position maybe six to eight weeks ago. And I was thinking, boy, this might be the best leadoff spot we've seen maybe since Kenny Lofton was patrolling that area for us. And you were there for all that stuff when Kenny first came and you saw him, as I mentioned, be the catalyst for those teams of the nineties. And I thought maybe you could reflect a little bit on Kenny Lofton. One of the great uh, winter meeting trades uh, in our franchise history, uh, Hank Peters, John Hart, Dan O'Dowd, trio uh, running our baseball operations at that time. Um, Willie Blair and Eddie Taubensey sent to Houston for uh, Kenny Lofton, who was mostly known as a basketball player at the University of Arizona, not really a baseball player. I don't think he was drafted till. 12th or 16th round by Houston or something like that. Um, but such a, an incredible athlete, um, his athleticism, his, uh, dynamic personality, as you mentioned, the word catalyst, absolutely the catalyst atop some of the greatest lineups in our franchise history. Uh, he played 10 seasons in a, a Cleveland uniform, uh, all time stolen base, uh, leader in our franchise history uh, uh, back in what 92 I believe it was his rookie year he set the American League and club rookie stolen base record he had 66 goes on and steals uh, leads the league and steals five times um, just a, a remarkable athlete uh, um, one of the numbers today ray that is uh so highly thought of in the analytics of looking how uh, you determine the value of a baseball player is ops on base percentage plus slugging here's a leadoff hitter whose ops in 17 seasons was 794 mm. if you get to eight if you're OPS is eight. You're thought of as one of the better players in the game of baseball. And this was a guy who did a leadoff uh, and didn't hit a whole lot of homers, but he had a lot of triples and a lot of doubles, stole a lot of bases, changed the nature of the game. The pitcher had to concern them himself with him, throwing a lot of fastballs to the guys behind him. Um, and then top it off, he's a four time gold glover. Um, pretty awesome for us to watch for 10 full seasons. And again, he's a young man that he didn't click other than stealing bases uh, because of his sheer speed and athleticism. Uh, he grew and developed into uh, this dynamic player. Kenny Lofton, just, I think, one of the team's greatest players. Uh, when you look at that team in the 90s and all the muscle they had, they had the speed of Kenny Lofton at the top of that order. The other, yeah, you know, I, yeah. one other, I'm sorry. I always kid him whenever I introduce him, Ray, and we're <laughs> in a group and we're talking to season ticket holders or any group at the ballpark. I, I always kid him that couldn't you have gotten one more hit along the way in your 17 years to uh, have a career batting average of 300? Cause his career batting average is 299. Uh, <laughs> and although I did some math, I think he would have had to get two or three hits if the same number of play appearances are at bats. Uh, but it, it's always the one um, that I always kid him um, about uh, ending his career at 299 and, and not 300. And I will tell you uh, one last thing on our friend Kenny. He was on the Hall of Fame ballot just once. You know, you have to get a certain, your first time on the ballot, if you don't reach a certain percentage, you're off until 
the Veterans Committee takes a peek at you. Um, his time on the Hall of Fame ballot only lasted one turn. Now, we could debate all you want, 17-year career, dynamic player, uh, certainly on the base paths and in center field, if Kenny Lofton is a Hall of Fame player. But I think that discussion should have lasted more than one year, absolutely more than one year. So I felt really bad for him in that regard that, uh, you know, uh, the debate the debate did not uh, go on uh, longer than just one year. I agree with you. The other area that I brought up to, to Bobby, and you're, you're with Senior VP of the Cleveland Guardians, Bobby DiBiasio. Hey, Bobby, brought to you by J.W. Dodato Electric, is I asked him to put together his all-time starting five, the starting pitching rotation for the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians through the years. And Bobby has seen or knows so much about the franchise. I was really interested in him picking his all-time starting rotation. Now, Mr. Feller would say you only need four, <laughs> but I'm saying the all-time starting five. That guy right there. Uh, yeah, there he is right yeah. there. Talk to the right there yeah. So talk to me, Bobby, your all-time starting five team. Well, um, you know, it's funny. You said Indians and, and Guardians. Well, I'm going to go back to the Blues, the Broncos, the Naps, uh, <laughs> okay. in addition to in addition to the Indians and, and Guardians. Um, you know, you, you start, look at, okay, here's guys who should be considered, but probably won't be on, on the five. Uh, people like Sam McDowell, uh, Charlie Nagy, who won 129 games. Uh, in the top 10 wins uh, in our franchise history that is just so rich in pitching history. You've got guys like CeCe and, and Cliff Lee, a Cy Young Award winner, obviously two-time Cy Young Award winner, and Corey Kluber. Um, you've, you've got some recent uh, play, pitchers that should be considered on this list for sure. Um, do you do you add Cy Young, who pitched uh, in a Cleveland uniform, not, albeit not very long, uh, but uh, one of the greatest uh, pitchers, obviously, in the history of our game? And it's funny that Bob Feller would always say that he never wasn't good enough to win a Cy Young award. Well, it wasn't established till he had retired. There was no <laughs> such thing as the Cy Young award uh, when he was pitching. So he obviously never won one. Uh, so you've got some incredible names that don't get on the list. Cy Young, Sam McDowell, Charlie Nagy, CC, Cliff Lee, uh, Corey Kluber. Uh, they're not on my five because oh. what I decided to I do. I thought you might put Kluber on there because I know you hold his efforts and the Absolutely. highest esteem. I, I thought he might make your top five. Yeah, I, well, I, his discipline and approach uh, um, was absolutely remarkable. Loved the way he got after it. Uh, um, that one season that Cliff won the, the Cy Young Award, you could have put a dime in the strike zone and he would have hit it. That's how precise and unbelievable uh, his one season as a Cy Young Award winner, Cliff, was remarkable. But then I sat and I said, you know, when I look at this kind of question, I guess I got to, I must start with who's in Cooperstown. I, I guess that was my overriding um, thought was mm -hmm. who's in Cooperstown and, uh, you know, we have five pitchers that uh, um, are enshrined in Cooperstown at the Nat National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. So you can start with Stan Kovaleski, um, 1916 to 1924. Uh, you know, he's fourth. He's the guy that most people don't recognize because he's fourth in all-time wins uh, in the history of our franchise. Uh was one of the dominant performers uh, of the game of baseball at, at, in that time period. So Stan Kovaleski's there. I think Addy Joss, again, 1902 to 1910, um, won 160 games, only wow. lost like 
what 97 or something or 47 somewhere in there i mean it it was just ridiculous and unfortunately a spinal meningitis took him at the age of 31 which is that famous charity game at league park that a lot of people believe is the precursor to the all-star game um, when the uh, cleveland uh, team played uh, the uh, american league all-stars um at League Park to raise money for Eddie Joss's uh, widow and, and the family. Um, you have to throw Bob Lemon in there, um, 1946 to, to 48. I mean, the guy was a seven time 20 game winner. Yeah. Seven time 20 game winner and a converted outfielder um, becomes one of the great pitchers of all time. Um, seven time 20 game winner. Early win. You know, one is 300th mm -hmm. game in a, in a Cleveland uniform, 164, five, somewhere in there, um, in a Cleveland uniform. He was a four-time 20-game winner, um, part of the big four, you know, Lemon, Wynn, Garcia, and, of course, uh, uh, the number one guy on the list is obviously the man uh, – uh, that was the first statue outside our building, uh, Mr. Bob Feller, uh, the heater from Van Meter, Iowa, uh, Rapid Robert, Bullet Bob, whatever nickname you wanted <laughs> to give him, uh, you know, uh, just uh, one of the greatest pitchers, argue, could arguably be in his period of time, uh, the greatest right-handed pitcher, uh, or even the greatest pitcher of, of his time, you know, when he was coming up at 17, you know, and striking out 17 Philadelphia athletics and uh, tying a, a record um, with Dizzy Dean and setting American League records. He jumped on the school bus, finished his senior year of high school. I mean, that's a, <laughs> there's just so many incredible stories, but Bob Feller obviously is at the top of the list. Okay, so uh, I get your analogy there. Those guys in the Hall of Fame, so... If I had to expand it to put you on the spot, who's number six? <laughs> who's the spot starter on your team? Who's number six? Oh, you know, it would be <laughs> it would be between Corey Kluber and Sam McDowell for me, because Sam McDowell, people forget, you know, he did good he was. He didn't achieve totally what he could have and his new book explains the tragedy in his life being an alcoholic and and not reaching his true true potential but even so he was one of the most overpowering um pitchers in in baseball history actually um but Corey Kluber uh, again there was a period of time where untouchable and uh boy um Half the game, I'd have the righty Kluber. The other half, I'd have the lefty Kevin <laughs> Dow. Can I do that, Ray? Can I I'll let that? you do that. I think you burned that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Bobby, senior VP with the Cleveland Guardians. He joins us each week, brought to you by J.W. Dodano Electric. Bobby, as always, my friend, thank you for the time. We'll get back together next week and talk more Cleveland Guardians baseball. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Ray. Always fun. Go Guardians.